Ooh. Hello everyone, welcome to tonight's episode of Poetry Vibe. Right. Hello Danny, hello Queen, hello Sarah. Hello Jenny, hello. I wish to ask for a favour, my stateside friends. For I am in an awful quandary. I'm very, very confused. Hello, Susan. Hello, welcome back. Did Philip Roth write any poems? Because my, my question is did, is, did Philip Roth write any poems? Because I'm meant to be doing Roth tonight and I've gone and checked all my anthologies downstairs and I have nothing in there. And, and then I went and checked online. Well, this could, this could be a slight problem. Ah, hello Avery, hello, hello, come in, come in, come in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see, I see. I appear to have been very, very confused by all of this. I thought, I thought that Roth had written poems that I would be finding down there in amongst my hoard some of his poems. You wanted me to read the prose instead. No, it seems not. It seems not, sir. Unless, unless he's written them and stuck them in a desk drawer somewhere. Um, not that have come to the light of day. Um, which explains a lot um, for my... Doesn't seem so, Danny. I can't, I can't find them in any of my books. Um, and I've just had a scour through online um, to see if I was missing something or um, to check the e-book stores. It is conditioner day. It is conditioner day indeed, Queen. And I would have done it this morning, only I was a bit, a bit pressed for time. Um, I was working on my novel, which is no excuse, clearly no excuse. Um, I might might give it some treatment after we're done here tonight. Condition about time to read. Condition about time. <laughs> can we split a different? I do Philip Larkin, Danny. Of course we can do. In actual fact, I was considering Larkin as a backup, and as it so happens, I've got some Larkin. <laughs> Believe it or not. Right here, we can, we can go and do um, some Philip Larkin. Have I got high, just make sure I've got high windows in here. I want to do high windows if we're doing Larkin. Um, Larkin, of course, is from just down the road, from Hull, which is the UK's city of culture. So I better have high windows in here. Otherwise I'm going to, yes, I've got high windows. Excellent, good. We'll work our way up to high windows. We've got a Facebook page. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm one of those Facebook. So I'm one of those digital marketers who can't really tell the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Believe it or not, <laughs> Danny. Totally, don't worry about it. I had the same issue. Don't worry. Yes, but yes, Sarah, I tell you what. We have got the Facebook page on there. I will, I will, when we're done here, when we're done here, I will set up a Facebook group as well so we can keep in touch. How about that, guys? How does that sound? Okay. Brilliant. I should be paying you for my marketing course. Clearly, Sarah. Um, not that I have time for my marketing course, I have postponed it now anyway, but um, we, will, we will do that. I will set up a group as we're done here, so hello everyone. <laughs> Can I pay you in kind with poetry, Sarah? How does that work? How, do, how does that sound? I'll pay you in kind with poetry. Anyway, hello Arkadina. Hello Beth and Agatha. Hello Avery. Hello Jenny and Danny and Queen and Sarah. Tonight, tonight we are doing some Philip Larkin, um, who was the former poet laureate um, of England. And um, actually, um, so Larkin was offered the position of um, poet laureate, but 
he turned it down. He didn't want any of that fancy poncy stuff. And so Ted Hughes, his fellow Yorkshireman, went and took the honour instead. And um, Philip Larkin was, of course, librarian over at the University of Hull, just down the road. So a poet very, very close to my heart. And tonight, tonight we're doing some um, of Larkin's poems. I do apologise in advance, by the way. I should put a disclaimer on this. With Larkin, there will be some crass language involved. Um, you haven't heard, Larkin's a wonderful poet, but there is, there is some crass language. Like, the, basically, when it comes to northern poets, northern poets like to swear. Um, with the exception, I think, of Hughes. Yes, yes, yes. With the exception of Hughes, um, who was far, far too well-mannered. Yes, your innocent hairs may, may have to be... I feel so weird swearing in front of you guys, by the way. I, there have, I will admit this now before we get started. There have been poems that I've read on here where I have had foul language and I have skipped over it or substituted another word instead. And I feel at times a bit like Krusty the Clown in the episodes of The Simpsons where um, he asks the Red Hot Chili Peppers to um, change the lyrics to give it away now. So I really just want to hug and kiss you. <sighs> okay, good. You can take it. That makes me happy. I feel more secure doing this. Well then, let's get in first then. And um, I'll jump in. Jump in with the Whitson Weddings. <laughs> You are a cruel audience! This is the Whitson Weddings. And I won't blush, I swear, although this is just... I put rouge on my cheeks this evening, guys. That's what it is. That Whitson, I was late getting away. Not till about one twenty on the sunlit Saturday did my three-quarters empty train pull out. All windows down, all cushions hot, all sense of being in a hurry gone. We ran behind the backs of houses, crossed the street of blinding windscreens, smelt the fish dock. Thence the river's level, drifting breath began, where sky and Lincolnshire and the water meet. All afternoon, through the tall heat that slept for miles inland, a slow and stopping curve southwards we kept. Wide farms went by short-shadowed cattle and canals with floatings of industrial froth. A hothouse flashed uniquely, hedges dipped and rose, and now and then a smell of grass displaced the reek of buttoned carriage cloth until the next town, new and nondescript, approached with acres of dismantled cars. At first, I didn't notice what a noise the weddings made. Each station that we stopped at sun destroys the interest of what's happening in the shade. And down the long, cool platforms, whoops and skirls, I took for porters larking with the males and went on reading. Once we started, though, we passed them, grinning and pomaded girls in parodies of fashion heels and veils, all posed irresolutely, watching us go. As if out on the end of an event waving goodbye to something that survived it. Struck, I leant more promptly out next time, more curiously, and saw it all again in different terms. The fathers with broad belts under their suits and seamy foreheads, mothers loud and fat, an uncle shouting smut, and then the perms, the nylon gloves and jewellery substitutes. The lemons, mauves, 
and olive ochres that marked off the girls unreally from the rest. Yes, from cafes and banquet halls, up yards and bunting dressed. Coach party annexes the wedding days were coming to an end all down the line. Fresh couples climbed aboard. The rest stood round. The last confetti and advice were thrown. And as we moved, each face seemed to define just what it saw departing. Children frowned at something dull. Fathers had never known success so huge and wholly farcical. The women shared the secret like a happy funeral. While girls, gripping their handbags tighter, stared at a religious wounding. Free at last, and loaded with the sum of all they saw, we hurried towards London, shuffling gouts of steam. Now fields were building plots and poplars cast long shadows over major roads. And for some fifty minutes that in time would seem just long enough to settle hats and say, I nearly died. A dozen marriages got underway. They watched the landscape sitting side by side. An Odeon went past a cooling tower and someone running up to bowl and none thought of the others they would never meet or how their lives would all contain this hour. I thought of London spread out in the sun, its postal districts packed like squares of wheat, and there we aimed. And as we raced across bright knots of rail, past standing Pullman's walls of blackened moss came close. And it was nearly done, this frail travelling coincidence. And what it held stood ready to be loosened with all the power that being changed can give. We slowed again, and as the tightening brakes took hold, there swelled a sense of falling like an arrow shower sent out of sight. Somewhere becoming rain. I like that poem. I like that poem especially because I know very well the um, route that Larkin was taken. But I've taken it many, many a time. Um, I used to have to take that train track down to uh, university. Um, when I went to uni in London, I took the same one. I have been through the Lincolnshire countryside. I have seen it on sunny days and all those lives contained in that hour. Um, and I think Larkin does a wonderful, wonderful job of bringing all that together, of evoking that moment in time and that power of very worthy to touch and connect you with so many people as you go past. So full credit to Larkin for that one. An excellent, excellent poem. This next poem though, this next poem, and hello, hello, hello Antonio, hello Jay, hello Taz, hello, hello, hello Jose, hello. Come in, come in and sit down. This next poem is perhaps Larkin's most famous poem. Um, it's called This Be The Verse. And I warned you, just to be clear. There you go, Danny's yaying for it. She knows what's coming up. This Be The Verse. They fuck you up, your mum and dad. They may not mean to, but they do. They fill you with the faults that they had and add some extra just for you. But they were fucked up in their turn by fools in old style hats and coats who half the time were soppy stern and half at one another's throats. Man hands on misery to man. It deepens like a coastal shelf. Get out as early as you can and don't have any kids yourself.
There. I've done it. Done it. I've said the naughty words. Uh, Tony Harrison had much naughtier words um, previously that we didn't read. Um, I'm glad you like that, Danny. Actually, my favourite, favourite... <laughs> You people are awful. You're awful, awful making me blush and feel bad for this. I'm glad, glad you liked it and that you were okay with the F-bomb. <laughs> thank you, thank you guys. Well, clearly, clearly I've mistaken you thinking that you were all such gentle, delicate souls. And yet, and yet that was fine. Clearly you've been watching too many Tarantino films in between um, my readings. Anyway, this next poem is actually my favourite, um, Larkin. Um, probably more so than High Wind. Probably more so than... Uh, <laughs> yes, blame it all on TV, Danny. It's all the telly's fault. Um, Understood which one? Which... The, uh... Understood which one, Queen? This be the verse? Or, or some of my, my laughing, blushing references? Either way, I'm going to... Right, I'm sticking my tongue out. This is High Windows, ladies and gentlemen. Although I'm not quite sure if I can call you a ladies or gentlemen in these circumstances. When I see a couple of kids and guess he's fucking her and she's taking pills or wearing a diaphragm, I know this is paradise. Everyone old has dreamed of all their lives, bonds and gestures pushed to one side like an outdated combine harvester. And everyone Young going down the long slide to happiness endlessly. I wonder if anyone looked at me 40 years back and thought, that'll be the life. No God anymore, or sweating in the dark about hell and that. Or having to hide what you think of the priest. He and his lot will all go down the long slide like free bloody birds. And immediately, rather than words, comes the thought of high windows. The sun comprehending glass, and beyond it, the deep blue air that shows nothing and is nowhere, and is endless. And yes, Sarah, you're quite right. I am the one reading all of these things. I am a foul potty mouth. And um, I shall have to go and tell my mother and, and apologise profusely for what I've done on the internet this evening. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time. And um, that was Hype Windows, which actually I think, bearing in mind the context of what we've been talking about, is, is Larkin's attempt really to uh, say that perhaps um, a bit of swerving is okay, a bit of freedom is okay. Perhaps this is a good thing about society that we're in. Yes, we are a bunch of rogues. We are an international community of rogues, Sarah. There's no other way to describe it. This next one, though. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely, a very bruised bottom for me over this. <laughs> you guys are terrible. Anyway, this next poem, um, this is also why I love Larkin. Um, in amongst all of that, in amongst everything, Larkin and especially the Northern poets, I think have a special, special ability to take those mundane, ugly, concreted structures of the North 
and to turn them into something poetic. Absolutely incorrigible is the word, Jenny. You're all incorrigible. But let's courage on. For this poem, um, Larkin wins for managing to get a service station on the M1 motorway into a poem. And really, you know, I visited, I think by now I must have visited just about all the service stations on the M1. I'll be doing some more service stations on the M1 on Friday. I've not been able to write a poem about any of them, but Larkin manages to get them into this one. So this is going, going. I thought it would... <laughs> Larkin did believe it was um, a little bit taboo. Um, he did, he had, he was, he was very, Larkin was very open in his poetry, but from what I understand of his private life, um, he did have lots of, of taboos with these issues. And yes, absolutely, A.V. Paradise, not to feel guilty over any of this. So I guess I have found my own little bit of paradise tonight, not having to feel guilty over mentioning sex or the F-bomb on this show. Um, to be fair, though, yeah, I think we've, we've done pretty good so far in skirting around sex, bearing in mind um, all the hey nonny nonny that's taken place in Les Mortes d'Arthur and the amount of poems that we've read, God bless Mark, you know, wasn't, wasn't quite so um, escapey. Um, yeah, yeah, Tristram is heavy nonny nonny and we've got a lot of bloodshed there. Let's face it, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. tonight, tonight is the night for diaphragms and I'm not going to say it unless it's in a poem. The F word and all that good stuff. Um, and for Simon to show that deep down inside, he's a very self-conscious, genteel Englishman. Um, thank you. Unless I'm in the road. When I'm driving, I swear like a sailor. Um, it has to be said. I, yep, I, I squirm in front of you guys. But yep, if I've got a group of cyclists who are blocking the road, but I'm trying to get somewhere at 7.30 in the morning, and um, I can't see where I'm going, I, I've got to drop to 20 miles an hour, then, then it might come out. This though is going, going. That uses the M1 marvellously. I thought it would last my time. The sense that beyond the town there would always be fields and farms where the village louts could climb. Such trees as were not cut down. I knew there'd be false alarms. In the papers about old streets and split-level shopping. But some have always been left so far. And when the old part retreats as the bleak high-rises come, we can always escape in the car. Things are tougher than we are. Just as earth will always respond, however we mess it about, chuck filth in the sea if you must, the tides will be clean beyond. But what do I feel now? Doubt? Or age, simply? The crowd is young in the M1 cafe. Their kids are screaming for more, more houses, more parking allowed, more caravan sites, more pay. On the business page, a score of spectacled grins approve some takeover bid that entails 5% profit and 10% more in the estuaries. Move your works to the unspoilt dales grey area grants and when you try to get near the sea in summer it seems just now to be happening so very fast despite all the land left free for the first time i feel somehow that it isn't going to last that before i snuff it the whole boiling will be bricked in except for the tourist parts first slum of europe a roll it won't be so hard to win with a cast of crooks and tarts and that will be england gone 
the shadows, the meadows, the lanes, the guild halls, the carved choirs. There'll be books, it will linger on in galleries, but all that remains for us will be concrete and tires. Most things are never meant. This won't be. Most likely, but greeds and garbage are too thick strewn to be swept up now, or invent excuses that will make them all needs. I just think it will happen soon. Well, Larkin wrote that, ladies and gents, in 1972, and we're in 2015 now. And the England that he's speaking of, especially the Yorkshire Dales and the area surrounding, I can attest, is still absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Um, it hasn't been taken over by a building site yet. It is still... Um, a gorgeous, gorgeous place to visit. I do recommend, and I, I won't periscope from um, any of the cafes um, on the M1 server, as I just want to get in, grab myself a coffee and a burger. Yeah, coffee and a burger, uh, and get on my way. But, but I will, I will take some photos. I will take some photos. Um, to share. How about that? I'll Instagram some photos of British service stations. Uh, you can't ask for much better than that, surely, can you? At least I think not. There, there, good, good, absolutely, Sarah, good. That's what we want to hear. I will, I'm taking my car as an escape and going down south, uh, just like a larkin recommends. I'm going to read one last poem for us tonight then. Um, <laughs> I, I think, I think a you shall not pass is excellent. Um, the other Gandalf one is when the lights turn green and the cars are still not moving and you have to do a fly you fools fly. Gandalf quotes. I'm going to be thinking Gandalf quotes whenever I drive for the next week now. Anyway, this, this is a lovely, lovely intimate poem um, by, by Larkin. This one is talking in bed. Talking in bed ought to be easiest. Lying together there goes back so far, an emblem of two people being honest. Yet more and more time passes silently. Outside, the wind's incomplete unrest builds and disperses clouds about the sky. And dark towns heap up on the horizon, None of this cares for us. Nothing shows why at this unique distance from isolation it becomes still more difficult to find words at once true and kind or not untrue and not unkind. Absolutely a pillow talk. But for Larkin, that pillow talk, for someone who was such a master of language, um, seems to still have that difficulty sometimes to be honest and truthful um, at night time in bed with a lover. Um, and I like that. I like... I think it would be so easy to write a poem that just says how easy it is to talk in bed. Um, and I do, I do love Larkin for being able to attack um, the intimacy of pillow talk with such a piercing, 
piercing truth and to bring that out. I think that is a lovely, wonderful, wonderful poem. So thank you, Danny. Thank you for that last minute alteration tonight. Thank you for recommending Larkin. Um, it was truly, truly lovely to read that to you guys. So thank you so much. And I will now set up a Facebook group. Ha! Absolutely romanticising everything can be far too much. Right, okay, there is a Facebook group going live, ladies and gents. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Um, right. There would be a Facebook group going live, but I haven't added any of you as friends on Facebook, so I cannot create the group. Right. Let's do this. Right, ladies and gents. Okay, we'll do this the easy way. Help me out here. <laughs> Guys, if you pop along to Facebook, like the Simon Tells Tales page on Facebook, um, like Queen's already done, that way I can follow you, um, that way I can friend you on Facebook, as I am just about to go and friend Queen, and I can go and invite you into the group. That way I can set up the group and pop you all in there. So go like Simon Tells Tales on Facebook, I'll friend you all off the back of that, and then I am Simon King on Facebook. But I have a picture which doesn't really show me. Um, I have a picture of me with short hair. I have short hair on Facebook. It's bizarre. There we go. There we go. All right. Okay. Let's. There we go. Right. We're doing this live now. This is me doing this. Um, no, no, no. Right. I need my notifications. I've got this feeling actually. Hey, here we go, here we go. I, I much prefer it long, I need to. So by the way, nobody commenting on the short hair. I will change to big hair on Facebook. Um, I will, I will, I swear, change to big hair. Right. Sarah, have I got you on here? I I think well I've got Danny, I've definitely got Danny, I can add Danny. This is sorted, I can. This is bizarre. How do we go and actually add some? How do we go and add someone on Facebook these days? It has been so long since I've added anyone on Facebook. <laughs> last week, last week, right server, right. It might be, I can only see people who've liked the page if they've gone and got a public profile. So it could be, it could be that you're just being hidden on Facebook um, so that I can't stalk you, which is awful because I should be allowed to stalk whoever I want. And um, I think that's most unfair. Um, right. I can go for them. Da -da. 
this is Facebook. We, we are now like <laughs> I've just I've just found I've just found Utah's I just need Okay, it seems it seems that Facebook's trying to do a LinkedIn thing. It wants me to prove that I know Danny first. Right. Danny, I've got a message going into your other folder. Um, and hopefully once you've got that, it's like that might work. Right, I've got Danny. I can get Taz now. Okay, I've got Tracy. Tracy's on there. We are... Uh... Right, can I grab server? Can I... <laughs> oh, hang on, what was that? I missed, I missed comments there as I was trying to, trying to, I can now set up a group though, because I can invite, right, so, I found Sarah, okay, this is, this is, this is it, right, right, here we go, here we go. Jen, I haven't spotted you yet, but I can now, hopefully, hopefully get to the point of creating the group for Simon Tells Tales. I can add Okay Can we now Set up the group. Are we going for an open group or a closed group, guys? What do we think? Public group or private group? Um, Olivia. Closed. Closed. Okay, closed it is, closed it is. Oh, I get to pick an icon. I get to pick an icon, guys. What icon? And I've got books. There's nothing for, let's go for some, a oh, book. A book for the icon. Yay! We've got a group, he says. Okay, over on Twitter now, I'm going to tweet a link to the group. But I know how to tweet. There we go. Okay, I just tweeted the link. I've tweeted the link to the Facebook group. Get on, get on that link then, request to join, I can add you all on there, and then add you all on Facebook. This, this is it, this is, this is how it's working. Fab. No problem, guys. Bizarrely, for some reason, I need to get in touch with if I sign out and in again. Facebook doesn't want me to add Danny. It hasn't got an ad button next to her. It's really weird. Well, I love you guys too. So thank you. I am now, here we, here we go. Notifications are coming through now. Yes. Yes, of course. Da, 
da, da, da, da. All righty, we are we are there, we are sorted. Let's go. Da, da. Stalking wins, all the stalking right. Right, we are there. I should actually edit my profile picture to something that looks a little bit more recent. He says. I'll update my profile picture later. I know I've got a recent picture lying around. Point being, we're there. Do you still not know Queen's name? I think Queen even hides her name over on uh, Facebook, don't you, Queen? Yeah, see, it's sneaky. It's sneaky. You're gonna. What you'll have to do? We'll have to play hangman for guessing your name, Queen. That's that's what it's got to be. <laughs> Use my fourth doctor photo. I can't bring that up. can't bring that one out after Halloween. That's a Halloween thing, surely. Surely. Let's. Well, we don't want stalkers, do we? Well, only good stalkers, only us kind of stalkers. Um, that's all right. Wall schmalls, but it's fine. It's fine, guys. The point is, we've got the group. Everyone should be able to request to join. Uh, I don't know. That we'll get. We'll get you some more sheep, Danny. We'll get you some extra sheep thrown in there as well. Uh, right. That is, oh, the power of having a group. But yes, we're there, we're there, got it. And we're sorted. That's the important thing. The question. Good, good, right, set up, everything's there. We can we can customize it as we can we can we is there, is can we customize that? We'll find a customize. Actually I might be able to customize it with a picture of a sheep. You never know. The Danny just for you. Just for you, I'm personalising the group with a picture of a sheep. There, that works. And we're now officially 66% complete because we've got sheep on the page. <laughs> for no real reason other than the fact that we like sheep. It works. Um, so you're very, very welcome. Thank you, guys. Right, anyway, it's getting late over here in England, and I am going to... Oh, that's awful. That's awful. Shame on you. Shame on you for doing such an awful pun. But we're all set. Good. We're set. We're working. Happy. Um, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to go and pop off for the night, grab myself some to drink. I've got some bits of writing to do before I uh, kip down for the week. I was thinking, guys, by the way, of on Thursday, perhaps reading you a bit of my novel that I'm working on. What do we think to that? Would that be 
Would that be good if I did a bit of my novel on Thursday? I says, thinking, thinking, yes, yes, really. I was, I, I like, I like the opening 1,500 words now. I'm happy with the opening 1,500 words. So um, I was thinking of maybe sharing that with you guys. Excellent. Well then, on Thursday then, um, instead of Poetry Live, what we might do is switch. And I'll read you a bit of my novel instead, and we'll have a reading of that. Thank you so much for being willing to listen, and thank you so much for coming tonight, and for encouraging me to set up the Facebook group. Well, you're very welcome. Avery, you don't have... I will also, actually, can I... I will also, just realising, because Avery's not on Twitter, if you want to join the Facebook group, Avery, and you're wondering where it is, I will, I will DM you over a link in Instagram as well. That way, that way you've got, you are on Twitter, but I've never seen you on Twitter. You're hiding on Twitter, clearly. Um, but I'll, I'll send it over anyway, so you've got that. Um, no, thank you guys for actually the idea for setting up the group. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful, brilliant idea. Um, thank you. Thank you. We've got that set up now. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know you all much better inside of that. But time to go and bash out some more words. Shave it down. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning. Um, wherever you are in the world tonight and I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you, thank you and thank you for the gentle ribbing of the naughty language in tonight's episode. Have fun guys and I will see you all tomorrow.